turn on my camera and we can get started. So hopefully you can all see me. You can see my screen. So I'll make a start. Yes, so good afternoon and welcome to our webinar, Art Just for Housing, a single source of truth. Thank you for joining. So we're going to spend the next 50 or so minutes talking about GIS in the social housing space, the benefits and the reasons why a social housing provider might use GIS, and the importance of having that single source of truth within your organisation. We'll show you a rounded example workflow to show the power of using location to tie together and make it easy to consume data for anyone in the organisation, and empower colleagues and different teams of functions to make the most of data available. We'll then look at a real world example from 13 Housing Group to learn how they have gained insight into their communities using location as the main link. But first, an introduction to the speakers. So my name's Isabel Clouting, and I'm a Customer Success Manager at Esri UK, leading on social housing within the government team. I'm joined today by Adriana, who's a Customer Success Consultant in our pre-sales team, who'll be showing us ArcGIS in action, and Rebecca, the GIS lead of 13 Housing Group, who has kindly joined to talk to us about how 13 are using GIS to gain insight into their communities. Just a bit of housekeeping first before we get going. So this webinar is being recorded and it'll be sent out to all attendees afterwards. In the follow-up email, we'll also be including a link to Rebecca's written case study, so you can read more on 13's example. And we'll be including a feedback form for which will include space for any questions that you have following on from the webinar, as we'll not have time for a Q&A in the webinar itself. So please do feel free to use this form to submit your questions for any of the speakers, and we'll be happy to answer these. So now on to our webinar and GIS and housing. But first, what is GIS? So a geographic information system or GIS is a framework for gathering, managing and analysing data. Rooted in the science of geography, GIS integrates many types of data and analysis using location as the key link, organising layers of information into visualisations such as maps and 3D scenes. GIS reveals deeper insights into data such as patterns or relationships. And housing is fundamentally a very location based industry. Every building it has its place. You can map it. It has an address and a spot on our map. A house needs to be connected to services by underground or overground pipes for water and gas, cables for electricity, and all these have a location and a network. To make that house a home, it needs to be connected to a community. Services for those who live there, such as health services, public transport, but also opportunities for work and education and green space so the people living there at that home can have a fulfilled life there. And so every home, while it can be just a dot on a map, has a complex network of data that could tell you a lot about it. And at Esri, GIS is so much more than just a map. So we help our customers manage their business data using location as the common tie, using visualization and analytics to support decision making and empower staff in the field to do the same data as those in the office, giving a common way for an organization to talk about and share their data and insights. So that single source of truth. And there are a lot of benefits to using GIS in housing. For example, improved decision making practices, knowing where your assets are and being able to pull together all the information about each asset within the context of where it is will help you build a more complete picture of your asset and the factors which affect them. You can see the correlation between external factors such as antisocial behaviour and empty properties and identify underperforming assets making smarter decisions about where to invest to convert these into financially sustainable assets. Better visibility of asset data can allow teams to access important health and safety information, ensuring there's a clear understanding of housing organisations' health and safety responsibilities. Assets can also be categorised by risk based on a wide range of factors, and this information made available to anyone who needs it, providing assurances that risks are being identified, managed and mitigated responsibly. Using GIS to stream internal processes cuts down the staff time taken in workflows, leading to cost savings, cost savings in those employees' time and reducing the likelihood of miscommunication as everyone can have access to the same information. And increased efficiency by focusing resources where they are needed most or where they have the largest impact, giving staff access to all the information they need to reduce time and information finding, whether it be neighbourhood teams out visiting their customers or ground maintenance staff seeing the precise location of the land that they need to maintain. So I hope this has helped set the scene and I'll now pass to Adriana to show GIS in action. 
Thank you for that, Izzy. So I'll be talking through how we can use GIS in the technical demonstration for housing. So in this um, demonstration, I'll first be looking at how we can visualize properties on the map to understand where your assets are, your property portfolio, and how this can be maintained um, online visualizing your properties. Then once we've visualized them, we're going to be conducting um, some insights into the data to understand how we can then manage properties uh, through applications online. We'll then also be exploring our ArcGIS integration with Power BI and how you can access um, your information and data from the ArcGIS system within Power BI. And then finally, looking at community area development and how members of staff uh, within this area may utilize GIS. So to start with, I'm going to simply load up a map application that I've got here, which I've preloaded with my data points. Now, it's important here to understand that you can bring your data from your own system into the ArcGIS online system. The base map I'm using here when I'm looking at this map is um, OS uh, master map. So there are three different types of master map backgrounds uh, available within the ArcGIS system. And master map is a premium base map that's available through Esri's platform. And it's Ordnance Survey's most accurate map of Britain. So if I zoom in and look into some detail, we can actually see the level of accuracy we've got for each property provided to us through this base map. So going back to looking at my property portfolio here. Um, I'm going to zoom into a specific neighborhood and look at specifically a grounds maintenance area of interest through the data sets I've already got loaded into the system. So I can visualize a boundary neighborhood of an area of interest that I'm looking at within these properties. And from this, we can use data to gain insight into which areas you may be maintaining within your grounds maintenance. The understanding of this is to see exactly which area you own, because essentially at the end of the day, you only want to be maintaining the land that's yours. We can then view property extent and also load data, for example, such as garages, where the properties are, just to build up that picture of actually where everything is in the neighbourhood. And we can also look at private ownership because it's important to understand not only the land that you own, but the surrounding area and who owns those properties. Within this data set, I've also managed to bring through hedges and trees data so we can begin to have an understanding of the environment surrounding your neighbourhood. And as we can see here, there are a few trees that sit outside the boundary of the properties that we are looking at. And whilst you're not maintaining these properties, these trees yourself, for example, it's important to be aware of their location in case something were to happen in example of a storm and the tree was then within your property boundary and the responsibility is then uh, lies within your area of maintenance. So it's important to have the situational awareness of your properties and the surrounding area. So as you can see, I've brought in this data from my own system. I'm also going to demonstrate how we can integrate this application and share this data out to provide it to the wider network of staff within my organization. So I've got a simple application here which has all that data which we were just looking at already preloaded into an application that I can then share with members of staff so that they've got access to turn these layers on and off and gain insight where is possible without looking in that original map view. So it's working with that single source of truth to contain to maintain that story of the data being used by different members of staff looking at the same view. But this data is not limited to that view. We can unlock different areas of the data through what's necessary for staff to be looking at. So in this example, I've created a simple dashboard whereby members of staff who are interested in grounds maintenance and the physical environment surrounding the properties can simply look at the trees and the hedges and all the grass areas through this dashboard and understand key insights at a high level overview. This dashboard includes interactive elements whereby I can simply uh, understand which trees, for example, uh, are different um, types of trees, how much grounds area this all covers, and gain that real understanding into what's owned and where it is so that we can maintain properties in an in accurate way. So going back to the map, we've seen how I can bring in my own data set, but now I'm also going to easily integrate with curated GIS data. 
So now we'll be talking about the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World. So the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World is a collection of over 10,000 curated geographical content within the ArcGIS platform. This content is free of charge and is accessible for anybody with a login to use. The data sets include base maps, ocean data, imagery data, boundaries of places. The list is endless. And people who have contributed to the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World in terms of their data sets include organisations like Ordnance Survey, Natural England, and even Sustrans and the Crown Estate. So if I go back into the ArcGIS system, I'm actually going to bring through a layer from the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World. So if I select a layer to add, and navigate to Living Atlas, I'm going to search for some environment agency data. The data in mind in this example is flood zone agencies, uh, zone three data from environment agencies, sorry. So bringing this data in, it's already curated in the format for the ArcGIS system. It's really easy to integrate into your maps all I have to do is press, press the plus button and as we can see the data is loaded in automatically. So I can actually understand now that within the map I've got loaded up in my property boundaries, some of the actual um, properties that I maintain are within the flood zone 3 according to Environment Agency's flood predictions. So this will give me insight into understanding where I should be maintaining properties and potential additional maintenance that should be done in the future in accordance with uh, flood risk. So if I just take a second to zoom out, we can actually see that this data set has loaded um, for the whole of the surrounding area and is readily available and is really simple to integrate into the system. Another different type of data I can load into the system is data from LangClan. So LangClan is uh, an Esri partner who provide a premium data service that you can purchase readily available data that's also compatible with the Esri software. And this data includes information such as EPC data, the current and potential scores of homes, land use data, environmental constraints. The list is really <laughs> endless. It's a very powerful data set. So I've actually used some of LangClan's EPC data uh, within the application I'll be looking at today. So very quickly, we can see I've overlaid this EPC data onto my existing properties so I can understand of the properties that I maintain, what their EPCs are currently and where they could be in the future. So using this map, I've then gone ahead and integrated this data into a dashboard. And in this dashboard, I've added some simple filters to allow somebody to interact with the application to filter the data and understand which properties, for example, are lower than C rating, because in accordance with government guidelines by 2030, properties must be of a C rating or above. Therefore, by having a simple filter within this application, we're able to understand those properties that are, at, that are in need of maintenance, first of all. We can then take this one step further and using the data I've already got in my system, I can understand the efficiencies of windows, walls and roofs of a property, for example. The dashboard is dynamic and it will update as we zoom into the locations to see when I've got scheduled maintenance, for example. So looking at this data, I'm now going to integrate uh, and move over to our mobile application to demonstrate how we can look at a different view of the data, still working with that single source of truth and that original data set we're looking at and how people in the field can use GIS. So I'll just transfer the screen sharing over to my mobile device. And that should be coming through your screens right about now. So opening up our field application, I've got that same view of the data I was looking at on the online version of the EPC scores of my properties that I maintain. So if I go ahead and zoom to a property which I would like to assess, I can select the property and I've actually can view the data that already sits behind the address and I've made a pre-configured form which I'd actually like to be filling out and this is for members of staff who are in the field collecting data in real time. So in this form, it automatically has selected the date and time, and then I'm able to filter out a different selection of questions that I've pre-configured for me to do. So I can fill out information about the window maintenance in this example, 
And once I filled out these forms, I'm actually deciding that the window energy efficiency is no longer very poor. It is just simply poor. So I can now go ahead and upload this data in real time when I'm in the field. Update the point and submit this data set. And I'll go back over to the online um, application so that we can see very easily that once I've actually um, conducted this information in the field, it's reflected in that dashboard that we were looking at earlier. So that single source of truth is continually updated as and when people are in the field. So if I start sharing my laptop screen again. We can now see that if I was to select uh, the properties which are very poor, as I had done earlier, that property that was about here in red has now disappeared as I updated the window efficiency simply to be poor. So we can see that the dashboard has dynamically updated in real time, showing the power of real time data collection with that single source of truth that we were talking about and how we can integrate that with mobile applications. So now we're going to look at how ArcGIS system can integrate with Power BI. So I have a simple video here that demonstrates how we can use the widget within Power BI uh, to load in data and analyze it through um, Power BI. So by using the ArcGIS widget as seen, um, I've just integrating it into a pre-existing uh, Power BI dashboard and as long as I've got my online login already logged in I can then start to populate my map with data just adding my latitude and longitude data in and as you can see my property portfolio has automatically been brought in. I'm then going to update this map to again show the EPC scores that I have and then simply show some visualizations that you have the opportunity to be editing within Power BI. So I can allow people to zoom into the map, change base maps. So we could be looking at the mast map base map, for example. And then add some simple amendments to the text on the map application and visualization edits. So I go ahead and on this part of the video, I'm just going to simply update the symbology of the points on the map because I would like them to reflect the green to red scoring that we see in EPC ratings across the board. And this does take a minute because it was uh, had to load all the different colors in. So I'm just going to skip through quickly. And now we can see once I've added those colors in, the colors on the map reflect the colors on the EPC scoring, um, which you'll be familiar with. And I can then go ahead and change that base map to the master map, as we were mentioning earlier. I've also got the opportunity for my dashboard to be dynamically integrating with the widgets updating as any other widget would with that automatic link through within Power BI. So when I filter something in the dashboard, the map filters too. And within the ArcGIS system within Power BI, I can also bring in data from my own content in ArcGIS Online or even from the living atlas of the world. As you can see, it's a simple click of a button and I've uploaded this data set into the map and I can now go ahead and visualize it in accordance with the rest of my dashboard. So now we'll be talking about community development areas and how we can use community development areas, uh, an application for community development staff and officers to simply filter data sets and create links between data and run analysis. So here I have a simple map of Exeter and it's overlaid with indices of multiple deprivation data. Now this indices of multiple deprivation data is actually sourced from the living atlas of the world. And we're also very proud to say that the census data from 2021 is being released through the living atlas continually. So looking at this data, we can now understand I can overlay this with information such as bus stops, for example. And the aim here is for me to understand where my pro properties lie, to understand the proximity of bus stops and accessibility for my tenants who are situated in these properties. I've also then done some simple analysis whereby I can look at where my properties are in relation to the certain uh, bus stops and which bus stops are most pertinent to um, the members of the community who are living in my um, properties that are maintained by my housing development.
So as we can see here, if I zoom in, we can see that a certain area of my properties are actually very importantly linked to these six bus stops here. So we can use this information and to understand how we can visualize data from our own system and draw in data from the Living Atlas so that community officers can gain wider insight into local neighborhoods and they can use this information to make informed decisions, for example, and run initiatives with the council so that we can improve accessibility for tenants within this location. Ultimately, this demonstrates the power of GIS and how you can understand spatial data and gain insight into it from that single source of truth, all operating from my properties that I bought in with the ArcGIS system. So now I'll be passing back to Isabel to continue the um, webinar. Thank you. Really, thank you very much, Adriana. So that was a great walkthrough. There's such a wealth of data that you can use to gather and share across the organisation and make sure that everyone has the information that they need within their job roles. Um, sharing that single source of truth, make sure that nobody is making decisions based on outdated or incorrect information. Using location as that tie can help unlock actionable insights and uh, taking that wealth of data that step further. Thank you. So following on from Adriana's demo, I'm now going to pass to Rebecca to share with us what GIS means to 13 Housing Group and show how they empower their staff on the ground and enrich the understanding of their own communities. Hi, everyone. So I'm just going to um, run through um, what we're doing at 13 um, and how we get benefit from GIS and um, with also with a bit of a deep dive into what we're doing um, in terms of community resilience. Um, I've been working at 13 for about five years now and we've been um, gradually building and developing on um, the benefits that we we get from, from GIS. So I really do hope you find this interesting. Um, so first of all, um, 13 is a social housing provider and we provide upwards of um, 35,000 properties to customers. Um, and we have properties located from Berwick-upon-Tweed down to Hull and then across to West Yorkshire. But predominantly our, our stock is li lies in the Teesside area. So as well as um, properties, we are also um, responsible for managing and maintaining around a million square metres of land. Um, we're also a housing developer um, building properties for outright sale and um, for shared ownership. But also in addition to, to this, we have a wide range of, um, of housing support services, so ranging from employability advice to um, support for, for um, people to live independently, as well as um, help with antisocial behaviour and, and much more. So I think as a business, um, GIS is really important to us. Um, housing is a very much a location-based industry. So without considering the geographical elements of our operational area, we could be missing key information or leaving um, gems of insight buried within data. Um, it gives us a really great understanding of, of where our assets sit, but especially within the context of the wider area. Um, we use GIS to, to gather data from a range of sources, um, quite often where the connection between those data sets is, is a spatial one. So, for instance, if we wanted to know, um, if we want to link up our information with census information, we need to know where our properties sit in terms of like low super output areas and output areas. Um, other, other ways we can use this as well as if we can have a look at where our properties sit in the context of flood alert areas. Um, or like in the example previously, um, we can see where our properties sit in relation to other, other amenities. But also being able to visualise a range of data, we can get that holistic view, which does aid our approach to problem solving. Um, and finally, and probably one of the most important things is the ability to use GIS to communicate a wide range of information in a visually um, friendly way that's useful across the organisation. So at 13, we provide mapping tools to data analysts to our leadership team and to, to the colleagues in the field so that they can answer 
customers' queries at that first point of contact, but also while they're in the field, they can gain a, a spatial context um, to the areas in which they're working. Um, for instance, like in terms of understanding where we've got ownership. Um, so I understand um, there'll be a range of people on this call today at different stages of, of your GIS journey. Um, so, or perhaps even right at the beginning. Um, so at 13, um, we were also on that journey that did start off with, with the paper map and has moved forward um, through PDFs to web applications um, and GIS field applications. So at 13, there's myself and the GIS technician, Ben, who manage, maintain and develop the use of GIS. And we're a pretty, pretty enthusiastic pair and we're gradually working our way across the business to identify solutions and coming up with ideas to where GIS could support our colleagues and um, therefore our customers. Um, GIS is key in understanding where our assets are and our ability to manage our land, um, as well as presenting that asset information to our colleagues. We also produce detailed plans for development, sales and planning applications. Um, but very importantly, we're responsible for ensuring that all of our assets are mapped so that we can feed that geographical location into our data warehouse. And this is really important because it enables us to map the wealth of information that we hold on our properties um, and identify spatial trends or hotspots through chloroplast mapping. Um, so for instance, we can find out where we've got high demand on repairs, where we've got high turnover, where we've got a large number of void properties. Um, and what's really useful as well as where this data is time aware, we can also um, track changes um, which will further enhance our enhance our insight. So also um, by analysing data sets together, it does also give us a huge amount of insight um, as to where one factor influences another, or potentially even sometimes just knowing that one factor isn't influencing another is quite useful information to gather. Um, it, this is has been really useful in our approaches to environmental sustainability um, and resilience, as well as provide, providing that powerful insight into the communities. Um, so in a few slides time, I'm just go, I'm going to um, look at our use of GIS in understanding communities in a bit depth, a bit more depth. Um, but first, I just wanted to give just a brief overview of the software and tools that we do use at 13. Um, so at 13, we are an Esri ArcGIS user. And in the past couple of years, and quite reluctantly on my part, we have moved away from ArcMap to the full use of Arc Pro as our main desktop GIS software. And this has been a, a really positive switch, um, potentially with the ease at which you can now work between Arc Pro and Arc Online. Um, it's also worth noting that um, the Living Atlas that was just um, run through in the previous demo, um, we gain a huge amount of insight um, from some of these pre-formatted data sets. Um, so it's definitely worth a look um, if, if you haven't already um, had a look at this. So we do have a, a wide range of web mapping applications um, and we found that these are really easy to build and easy to manage. We build these applications with the end user in mind um, and there's a lot of customization that enables us to give the functionality that um, each um, user and user needs um, alongside the effective visualization of their required data set. This just provides really quick and easy insight into that data. And also we have been starting to add um, a number of mapping visuals onto our current Power BI dashboards. Um, so obviously they're like, this is the key, the key example I'm going to run through. Um, and it's one of our key developments that we've been working on. And it's, what we've been doing is been developing a community map and associated mapping tools. Uh, so our community resilience strategy at 13 is all about supporting um, communities um, where we operate to ensure that um, they're sustainable for the future. Um, we all, we realise as a business that if we have engaged and empowered communities um, that are thriving then as a business, we also thrive. Um, so and a lot of the strategy also aims to build on that community spirit that was shown um, in the pandemic. But I suppose what we first need to do is understand um, what a community is. So for instance, like what is the infrastructure like in an area and um, what opportunities of it are available for customers um, and the wider community? What do the existing support services look like? Um, and what is the potential impact of, for instance, like political change that we might need to support our customers through? Um, 
and it's all about working out what we have like the capacity to change what we have the capacity to influence and what we do and um, just simply have the ability to support customers and um, through so using GIS we've been able to assist the team to identify and understand areas of focus so what we've done here is we've um, strengthened partnership working and we've ensured that ev um, strategies are all evidence driven um, and all of this has been possible by providing those correct GIS data sets and GIS tools to the correct teams. So GIS has been a key tool in terms of assisting those teams to identify those localities, but also to understand the localities where we have customers. Um, so GIS is a perfect tool to be able to pull data from a wide range of sources, visualise it together in a way that's easy to understand and interpret. So what we've been able to do is map out internal demand. So for instance, um, on arrears, terminations, voids, APC ratings, but we've been able to visualise that demand alongside external data sets such as crime and antisocial behaviour, employment, um, income levels and indices of deprivation and, and many more. Um, and the data um, has then highlighted to us a number of focus areas where we where the team have now developed a five year commitment to engage, support and collaborate in order to ensure those communities are sustainable and the customers are proud to live there. Um, so obviously we know that communities are diverse in their needs and this is dependent upon populations, social, economic and environmental factors. So being able to use GIS data alongside a lot of community consultation, we've been able to identify different strengths, priorities and needs of those specific localities. And that's really helped us to be able to target our resources effectively um, and drive those appropriate interventions. So, for example, through um, looking at demographic population data, we've been able to identify areas that, um, that would benefit from youth groups and youth activities. We've been working with local schools um, and community groups to meet that need. Um, we can also see, for instance, where we've got potential issues with antisocial behaviour and crime and mapping that alongside um, the provision of community watch groups. We've been able to support existing groups or particularly in one of our areas, we realised there wasn't there wasn't anything like that at all. So we've been able to support the community to develop a, a, a community watch group. Um, and that's been really beneficial in those areas. Um, so 13 have always had quite an important presence in the community. But we wanted to be sure that we're making the most of most of our presence by targeting the resources that we have correctly. So with effective mapping of amenities, community groups, community assets. And um, this ensures that we have the knowledge um, to point customers in the right direction. Um, we collaborate um, effectively with, with other, other groups, which reduces the duplication of effort. Um, but also um, by mapping out our support service, we can identify where we potentially have gaps. Um, so just a couple of really nice examples of, of collaboration um, that's been ongoing. So. Um, we have looked at um, the like looked at um, the provision of open spaces within our communities, and obviously this was particularly prominent during during the pandemic, where green spaces were, became so important to us. Um, and in one of our states, we did notice that there's a limited amount of open space. So what we've done there is we've been able to work with um, the local council to enhance the space that does exist to make it. Um, that much more appealing, that much more pleasant, that much more usable for a wider range of the community. Other things we've been able to do is link in with um, community groups, local schools, other social landlords as well, because it's important that we work together um, in our areas. And we've been able to like run, help run um, a number of community days, so like big clean days. And um, recently in one of our estates, um, the, the planning a heritage celebration, and it's in the planning process at the moment, but um, our community resilience coordinator said how great it is in terms of pulling all aspects of the community together, all the partners that are involved in just creating that more of a, a, a strong, a strong community atmosphere um, amongst the amongst the different people who um, care about those communities. Um, and then I think this is one of my favourite examples. Um, we have a community room um, connected to one of our sheltered scheme. And there's uh, some people in, within the uh, within the sheltered scheme, some of our residents who want to give more back to the to the local community. Um, 
and what they were able to do, they connected in with our community resilience team and the community resilience team has helped them to publicise and to, um, find um, this, get the correct support to set up um, a provision which is now providing hot meals for a wider, a wider, um, wider um, view of the community. So um, I think that's a, a really lovely way of which we've connected with with a community group or with an existing community um, for the benefit of the wider community. Um, so GIS is really, really important in this like evidence driven approach. Um, we work really closely with our policy and research teams, with our um, data teams. And what we do is we critically assess each of the data sets to ensure that we are only using the best data available um, to inform our activity um, and putting, this, putting the correct data at the fingertips of the relevant teams. Um, the GIS is fed in uh, um, project initiation documents or bids for funding. And an example of this um, was we um, inputted um, antisocial behaviour information that we we hold um, alongside um, Police UK data, alongside um, land ownership and asset location information. And this is fed um, into the team's application for funding for an alleyway regeneration project. Um, we've also used GIS to map out our current community centres um, that we have at 13. And what we've been able to do is we can identify where we've got an overlap um, between existing centres, not just the ones that we own, but also um, others are, are run by other charitable organisations in the local area. Um, and what we've done is we've been able to look at 13 information along with their customer segmentation um, data sets within um, a one kilometre radius of these centres which helps us to provide an understanding of what the communities are like in those centres and who, were, who were the communities that are being served in those areas to ensure that, that we are meeting the needs of those communities. And so that's been really, really valuable as well. Um, so I just wanted to mention the census results quickly. Um, the currently 13 are on the way uh, working through the release data set. Um, and we've pulled out some really good data insight already. Um, for instance, we're looking at our employability, uh, looking at employability data that's come out of the census. And what we're what we've been able to do is map map um like chloropleth map those um areas where potentially um customers would benefit from support from our employability team. But what we've been able to do is map that alongside where we're currently we currently have a provision of support. And what that's been really useful is we've been able to pinpoint some areas where currently we're not supporting but we absolutely could be so that's been really um really valuable already and um, but obviously there's so much data coming out of the census 2021 and this can be mapped from your local authority level all the way down to your output areas um which really gives that gives us another wealth of information to give insight into our area so we found that this has been been quite exciting and i'm sure it's quite exciting for any gis team at the moment um, so really, um, just to summarise, the use of GIS has been really useful in providing the right data presented effectively within the right tools to the correct people. And it is providing to be a really successful use of GIS at 13 in that evidence based targeting of resources. Um, so we've been able to collaborate and support customers and communities really effectively. Um, so yeah, that, that's everything from me. But um, thanks very much for listening, and I'll pass you back to pass you back to Izzy now. Brilliant. Thank you, Rebecca. That was a uh, brilliant. It's I really like hearing about the thought that goes behind all the data available to you, um, how you use it. That you're asking questions of what it shows and what targets the data can support and providing that tangible evidence for 13's work and goals. It's great to hear how GS paints that picture and helps provide evidence for the decisions that you're making and the results that you're getting. So we're now at the end of our webinar. I hope you've enjoyed listening and can see the value of using GIS as a framework to connect, analyse and share data, providing that single source of truth for an organisation. In this time, we've seen examples from both Rebecca and Adriana of the wealth of data that you can use and visualise using location, how you can share this across your organisation in a number of different ways for different audiences, and the real value that this brings when you're using data to support your organisation's goals and objectives, giving you a common way for your organisation to talk about and share information, so that single source of truth. 
So we'll be dropping a link um, for feedback to our feedback form into the chat. So you can send over any comments and questions that you have for any of the speakers, and we'll be happy to follow up and answer these. We'll also be following up with an email, which will include the link to Rebecca's written case study and the recording of the webinar. Um, so thank you for listening, and I hope you'll have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you.